Did you know the average U.S. household with credit card debt has a balance of around $7,226? And that's not counting student loans, car loans, and mortgages. Here's the thing. Debt doesn't just impact your wallet. It could take a toll on your mental health, your relationships, and your ability to start planning for the future. It could feel like you're sinking with no way out. But remember, even in the darkest of times, there's always a way forward. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear plan on how to start reducing your debt step by step. And trust me, every small victory will feel like a massive win. Let's be real, debt affects almost every one of us. But before you start getting down about it, let's get something straight. Debt is not the enemy. There are two types of debt, good debt and bad debt. And understanding the difference is the first step to start taking control. Good debt, like public student loans or mortgages, are considered investments. Because they usually come with lower interest rates and can lead to future opportunities like a higher paying job or a place to call home. Then there are bad debt. Those are the high interest credit cards that can spiral out of control and make you feel trapped. So how do you cut down on those debt that's holding you back? First things first, you need to know what you're up against. So take a deep breath in and let it out. <clears throat> now. List all of your debts from your student loan to that last credit card swipe at the store. And you need to understand which are the good debt and which are the bad debt. Again, good debts like public student loans and mortgages are typically lower interest rates and tied to something that will increase in value over time. Then there are bad debts like high interest credit cards and payday loans. This distinction is crucial because it helps you to prioritize which debt to tackle first. Getting clear on your debt is step one. Once you know your debts, it's time to start tackling them strategically. The biggest mistakes people make is treating all debts equally. They're not. High interest debts are the real villain here. They cost you more over the long run and they grow faster than lower interest debts. So here's what you need to do. Rank your debts from the highest to the lowest interest rate. This is where the magic of the avalanche method comes in. Focus on paying off the debt with the highest interest rate first while making minimum payments on the rest. Once that's gone, move on to the next. It's like taking down the biggest bullies first. The rest start to look a lot less intimidating. Now that you got a plan for your debts, let's talk about something just as important, your budget. Yeah, I know, I know, budget, Urgh. it's almost like a dirty word, but trust me, it's your best friend in this journey. A budget is not about restrictions, it's about freedom. It's about telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Start by tracking your income and expenses for a month. See where your money is going and identify areas where you can cut back. Remember, every dollar saved is a dollar you could put towards knocking out your debt. The goal is to create a budget that's realistic and sustainable. While you're working hard to pay off your current debt, the last thing you want to do is add more to the pile. This means making more mindful decisions with your spending. Before I make a purchase, I ask myself questions. Do you also ask yourself questions before you make a purchase? If you do, let me know in the comments below. But I ask myself questions like, do I need this right now? Can I wait to make this purchase in cash later on? So I challenge you to also ask yourself questions like, how much will this purchase benefit me in the long run? And if the answer is not much, maybe you hold off and make the purchase later on. Remember, the goal is to get out of debt, not dig a deeper hole. So stay focused, stay disciplined, and keep your eyes on the prize. If you got multiple high interest debts, debt consolidation might be an option for you. This involves combining all of your debts into a single loan with a lower interest rate. It simplifies your payments. You only have one to keep track of and it can save you money on interest. Just be careful, not all consolidation loans are created equally, so do your research, compare rates, and make sure the new loan is actually helping you and not hurting you. The key is to use consolidation as a tool to make your debts more manageable, not as an excuse to take on more debt. Here's a little known secret. Sometimes you can negotiate your interest rate. 
That's right. So call up your credit card company and ask for a lower rate. The worst they can say is no, but you'd be surprised how often they say yes, especially if you've been a loyal customer. If you have a good payment history, they may be willing to lower your rate to keep your business, and even a small reduction in interest rate can save you a significant amount of money over time. Remember, it never hurts to ask. Now, let's flip the script. Instead of focusing on cutting back, let's talk about how to increase your income. And this could be as simple as asking for a raise, picking up a side hustle, or selling things you no longer need. The more money you bring in, the more you can throw at your debt. And trust me, every dollar counts. Whether it's dog walking, freelancing, or even renting out a spare room, find ways to bring in extra cash and use it to pay down your debt faster. So listen, I was coaching this one client, single mother of two. She was drowning in debt with high credit card balance, medical bills, student loans. She was so frustrated because she didn't know what to do. Her budget was so tight, she could barely afford to make minimum payments. But instead of giving up, she decided to take action. She started by leveraging a skill she had, which was baking. She loved to bake and her friends, they always raved about her cakes. So she started a side hustle selling baked goods, uh, first to friends and family members and eventually to local businesses. And at first, this was just to make some extra cash over the weekends. But soon, word of mouth spread and her side hustle started to grow. She was bringing in about an extra $500 a month, which was dedicated to paying off her high interest debts. And after a year, she had paid off three of her credit cards and had significantly reduced her student loan balance. She had really wanted to live a debt-free life. Do you want to live a debt-free life? Listen, if you're enjoying this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button for more personal finance tips just like this. Now, when you're in debt, every penny counts. So take a hard look at your spending and identify areas where you can cut. Do you really need that daily coffee run? Can you live without that cable package? Small cuts can lead to big savings over time. And remember, this is not about depriving yourself. It's about making choices that aligns with your goals. The less you spend on things you don't need, the more you have to put towards your debt. It's about focusing on things that really matter. Now, I know we're talking about paying off debt, but there's an interconnection between paying off debt and having an emergency fund. Having an emergency fund is crucial because life is unpredictable and without having that financial cushion, you can end up right back into debt when unexpected expenses come up. So start small. Aim for $1,000 at first, and this fund is there to cover things like car repairs or medical bills so that you don't have to reach for your credit card every time life throws you a curveball. It's about breaking that cycle of debt and setting yourself up for success in the long term. Does this make sense to you? If it does, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Listen, don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. If your debt feels overwhelming, consider speaking to a credit counselor or a financial coach. They can help you create a plan, negotiate with creditors, and even find ways to reduce your debt that you might not have considered. There's no shame in seeking professional advice. Sometimes having an expert in your corner makes all the difference. Knowing your debt, prioritizing high interest debts, sticking to a budget, avoiding new debt, exploring debt consolidation, negotiating lower interest rates, increasing your income, cutting unnecessary expenses, building an emergency fund, and seeking professional advice are all crucial steps to start reducing your debt. As I mentioned earlier, all debts are not created equal. Credit card debts is one of the worst debts that you can carry. You need to know how to get rid of this debt as soon as possible. And the on-screen video will help you pay off this debt fast. So click on that video and I'll see you there.